Just an absolutely perfect summer Saturday in Southern California. How about some baseball for the nightcap? Game three between the Marlins and Padres is coming right up. Last night, the Padres played some long ball, three solo home runs, including one from Miami native Yonder Alonso, as the Padres jumped on the fish and Dan Heron for a 3-1 victory in the second game of this four-game series between the Padres and the Marlins. Welcome to Petco Park tonight. It's game three of this four-game series. And with Mark Grant, I'm Jesse Agler. So glad you're able to join us here tonight. That was a lot of fun last night. We got to see the, the Padres play some long ball, and we're enjoying this power surge, aren't we? It is very nice. And when you look at the National League rankings, Jesse, the San Diego Padres ranked sixth in the home run column. And a lot of people would probably say, wow, I did not realize that, because that's not bad. Well, last night it came to fruition and getting off the right-handed veteran Dan Heron. Brett Wallace connected for his first home run. It was an off-speed, high pitch. Speeds up his bat way out of here. Yonder Alonso connected for his third home run. Another fat pitch that he was all over. And then, how about Matt Kemp? Talk about back-to-back -back jacks. Get up on top of that fastball. El Centro, yo, for the back-to-back -back jacks. How about this little nugget? Yeah. Padres 31-18 and when they homer once. 17-9 and when twice. They are six and three when they homer thrice. Wow. Six and three, three times. So it's a six it, out of nine was a victory. Love that for the Padres. And everybody loves the long ball. Yeah, no, it's a good winning percentage. And when the Padres score a couple of runs, they win about 60% of the time. That's what they're trying to do again here tonight. Last night, that guy, Brett Wallace, played a huge role for San Diego, offense and defense. When we come back, more on the former Arizona State Sun Devil, Brett Wallace. the opportunity. Brett Wallace goes deep for the first time as a Padre. Yonder Alonso says lean on me. Cuidado! Padre's going cap band this inning. Drop the bomb on me. Yonder Alonso, Matt Kemp. 
Welcome back. Brett Wallace yesterday hit his first home run since September of 2000. 13. Sean Kelly liked what he saw from Brett Wallace yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, ready for today, trying to get it. Win number two in a row. Wallace struggled the last couple of years and then came over to the Padres and played in the AAA. Finally came up because he knew that he could get a chance here with this organization. He played for Pat Murphy at Arizona State. So I asked Pat, what has it been like to see his success and see what he did last night? It was a great feeling, a great feeling for him. I know his family well, I know his wife. And, um, but in the heat of the moment, it, it goes away, you know what I mean? But it was great for him and, and to know the journey that he's been through, to have the, the privilege of uh, being around him in El Paso and uh, see his journey there of trying to play third base again. And um, just proud of him, you know, I'm just proud of him. So a big day for Brett. He's not in the lineup today, but he is available off the bench as the Padres brought their power bats to the yard last night, trying to repeat the same again with Ian Kennedy on the mound. As they try and reel in the Marlins, two games in a row and at least tie this series. We got first pitch coming up on Fox Sports San Diego. and learn how to launch your career today by Petco what we feed them matters by RCP Block and Brick start your outdoor project at rcpblock.com and by SeaWorld discover the wonder of the sea little ocean life there and a nice warm evening on this summer Saturday as Ian Kennedy and the Padres take the field third game of this four game series between the Marlins and the Padres telling us it is 80 degrees out with partly cloudy skies definitely warm but great for baseball with Mark Grant Chris Budden our entire Fox Sports San Diego crew I'm Jesse Agler Marlin lineup is brought to you by Hyundai a little bit different than the last couple of nights no Ichiro out of the starting lineup here Michael Morse gets his first start of the series in left field Real Muto back behind the dish after Mathis started the game last night behind the plate for the fish. And the scouting report for Ian Kennedy making his 18th start is brought to you by Montalvo. Hey, establish the corner command. See where I got the K's there, Jesse? K, K, Kennedy. Anyway, off speed for strikes. He's got the change up. He's got the curveball. If he can master that pitch early in the count, even for strike one, and then go up the ladder by design with the fastball, we know he pitches up in the zone. Mm -hmm. Maybe get some strikeouts for Ian Kennedy tonight. 
I see what you're saying. He was a 200 strikeout guy last year in over 200 innings. Kennedy back to work with this defense behind him. Padre D is brought to you by San Diego County four dealers. Justin Upton in left. Venable gets the start in center with Matt Kemp in right. Solarte and Barmas on the left side of the infield. Jerko and Alonzo on the right with Derek Norris behind the plate. Home run for Yonder last night and a great defensive play by mm -hmm. Jerko to end the game. And speaking of defense, no miscues, zero in the E column for San Diego, a big part of the 3-1 victory last night against Miami. Yeah, no doubt about that. Paul Gillespie, the right fielder, ready to go against Ian Kennedy, who's making his 18th start of the season. Ian comes in 5-9 with a 4.78 ERA. May have an opportunity to talk about shadows here in the first couple of innings. And the Kennedy fastball hits the inside corner to Gillespie. Nothing in one. You know, I've always been the believer, and chime in if you'd like, Jesse, that it always makes it look worse on TV than it is in person. Because when you look down to the field, it really doesn't look like it's that big of an effect. I think the batter's eye is a big key. The batter's eye right now is dark. It's in the shadows. No sunlight at all. So from a hitter standpoint, I think they get a pretty good read on the baseball out of the hand of the pitcher. It's the old thing you always hear is that when the ball comes in and out of the shadows for a hitter is when it gets difficult. We'll see if it helps out these pitchers early on. Ian Kennedy doesn't need any help there. Three-pitch strike out of Gillespie to get it going. Tom Hallion rings him up. One away. Well, a couple of things here. First one is Uno Dos. Adios on the fastball in. He may have gotten a call there. And then Tom Hallion is the second thing. Listen to this. Oh, ring him up. Hopefully we see a lot of that tonight when Ian Kennedy and the Pottery pitching staff is on the mound. Allie and the crew chief with Bellino at first, Siegel at second, and last night's plate umpire Marquez at third. Martin Prado, Marlins second baseman, takes the first ball of the night from Ian Kennedy, 1-0. See the numbers in 71 games for Prado. One for four in each of the first two games of this series. Got the familiar bat wave. And he takes a fastball strike, one and one. Prado came over from the Yankees this past December in the same trade that brought the Marlins starting pitcher tonight, Brad Phelps, to South Florida. Beaches for that one and lines it into right field. A fair ball as Kemp runs over towards the corner to try and cut it off. Prado going for two, and he'll get there. One out double here in the top of the first inning for Miami. And a man in scoring position for Christian Yelich. All right, Mark, going to take a look now. Your keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. What do you want to see? Well, I want to see a little formula come to fruition. Two runs by the Padres plus some homers. That equals a victory. We talked about that in our open, the home runs. And consistency with the K. Get it? Consistency, Kennedy, K. I get K it K strikeout yeah, yeah, yeah. and consistency. And his name starts with K. Right. That's also part of it. That's good. Yelich takes a strike. You know how much time I spent on coming up with that? I mean, probably a while. It was all yeah. night. As soon as last night's game ended, you got that win out of your system, you enjoyed it for a couple of minutes, and then right on to the next night's keys. I think of the next game. Yeah, you're a true professional. Yelich takes inside. One thing I want to keep an eye on this evening when Ian Kenny's on the mound, does he get beat on the fastball? How many hits is he going to give up on the fastball? That last hit from Prado, I, that's one of those you tip your helmet, tip your cap. It was down and away. Prado just did a nice job of filleting that ball the opposite way. The fish did the filleting. Swing and a miss, one and two. Tied him up. Yeah, tip your cap to Martin Prado on that double. 14th double of the year for Prado is Kennedy. Going to try and finish off Christian Yelich. And he's fisted off and pops it to short. Easy play from Barmas to away. Hey, I would say that's finishing him off right there. Getting in his kitchen. Almost went Luis Gonzalez. <laughs> Over Jeter's head as we take a look out of the hand. That's a four-seam fastball. And Yelich tries to get it out of there, but perfectly positioned. Barmas. Big out, number two. It did look like that, Game it 7 of the 2001 yeah. World Series. Yeah. 
little bit different context here, of course, July 25th. But that never gets old watching that video. Great World Series. Diamondbacks and the Yankees. Four takes a curveball strike. And, of course, Randy Johnson will be at the dais and uh, speaking. Or he spoke today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Going in as a Diamondback. Good stuff. Big weekend in Cooperstown. Congratulations to our own Dick Enberg. Today he received the Ford C. Frick Award. We'll hear from Dick throughout the game tonight. And then the player inductions in Cooperstown tomorrow. Hey, right out of the get-go, Jesse, Ian Kennedy is establishing the fastball into the lefties. And that is a good sign. Not allowing them to get extended on that fastball. Ford drove in the only run of the night for the Marlins last night. That was in the first inning. Third ball in the dirt, one and two. RBI double last night, and Miami had the early one to nothing lead, but that would be it. Andrew Kashner did a great job settling down and had an outstanding night as he earned his fourth win of the season. Hey, nice line for Cash. Pitch his tail off. Seven solid innings. Really worked out of a jam, leaving that triple stranded in that last inning. Four tries to hold up on the high fastball, and he did, according to Marquez. Another fastball up and in. Have we seen the changeup yet from Ian Kennedy? We may have, but this might be a good, good spot for a changeup. Seen a couple curveballs, plenty of fastballs here through his first 14 pitches. He might double up, though, and throw another fastball. Curveball, and it's lined into left field for a base hit. Upton is charging. Prado is going to be held at third as the throw comes all the way through to Norris. So a two-out single for Bohr. Runners on the corners for Miami. And Michael Morse coming to the plate. Seen a lot of two-out hits from the Fish yep. in this series. Justin Bohr did a nice job of staying on that curveball and taking it the opposite way. How many times you see a big, burly left-handed hitter take a breaking ball the opposite way? Usually that's pull mode. And Justin Upton charges this ball correctly. Realizes there are two outs. And even though Lenny Harris throws up the stop sign, nice throw to home plate. Now they got to come through with another two-out hit. First start of the series for the former Giant. And National Mariner Oriole, Michael Morse. Saw him as a pinch hitter last night in the ninth inning. That was his first action of the series. And he takes strike one from Kennedy. Hey, big guy, big strike zone. That was a high curveball to Michael Morse. Certainly not what the Marlins were expecting production-wise when they signed him to a free agent contract this offseason. Figured they could just pencil him in at first base, maybe some corner outfield at times, hit behind Giancarlo Stanton, and production just not there. Mike Redmond began the year as the manager for the Fish. Dan Jennings took over in mid-May. There's a changeup, two and one to Morse. Yeah, when you take a look at teams prior to the season and you write down that lineup on that sheet of paper, yeah. it's about as worth as much as that sheet of paper, isn't it? They've got to, they've got to produce. Jennings, of course, the general manager who signed Morse, 33 years old, to that deal. Now he's managing him. Marlins are an interesting team. They really felt like they had put together a good ball club this yeah. year, like you said, on paper at the beginning of the year. Thought they'd be competing, and it has not gone as planned even before the Stanton injury. They're playing 500 since he went out. The troubles really took place before that. But... I think they're going to avoid the temptation to completely disassemble the thing and maybe try and add a little bit here, subtract a little bit there, and go for it again next season. Moore swings through the 92-mile-per-hour fastball, and that ends the first inning. A couple of Ks for Ian Kennedy. He got Gillespie to start it, and he got Morse to end it here in the top of the first. Venable, Solarte, and Kemp coming up.
baseball night in San Diego. Padres and the Marlins playing the third game of this series. Padres lineup is brought to you by Toyota. Will Venable in the leadoff spot tonight. Solarte at third. Kemp Upton Alonzo in the middle. Derek Norris, Jed Jerko, Clint Barmas, and the pitcher, Ian Kennedy. Against David Phelps. And the right-hander scouting report is brought to you by Sleep Train. A starter reliever. Interesting. Last four years, bouncing back. But each of those years, more than ten starts. So he's used to starting. And uh, he's that good swing guy, like an Odrisimir de Spagne. I think it's a very integral part to any ball club to have a guy like Phelps and de Spagne. 28 years old. Came up through the Yankee system, mentioned. Traded to the Marlins this offseason. Will Venable takes ball one, and he hits that one right back to David Phelps. Quickly, one away. Phelps taking care of that ball in play all on his own. The Marlin defense, the rest of it, is brought to you by Renovation Realty. Imagine Morris getting the start out in left field. Yelich is usually there. He flies over to center. Gillespie and right with Dietrich. Echeverria on the left side of the infield. Prado and Bohr on the right. And Real Muto back behind the dish. Switch hitting on Hervey Solarte. You know, the sun shouldn't be a factor in right field because when you look at it, it's almost if you look at it as a sun, sundial, look at the way that the shadow is going away from Gillespie. It's not like directly behind him. So a, line, a low line drive, you know, that sun is offset to where it's not going to bother him right in his eyes. All the little nooks and crannies of shadow and light that are created by the different structures as Solarte lines that one up the middle. And he singles off his former teammate Phelps. One out single for the Padres here in the bottom of the first. Well, last night we saw Matt Kemp get on top of a high pitch. Go yard, center field. How about Jan Hervis Solarte going right back up the box? A little hockey suit. With the ground ball to the center fielder. Oh, it looks who, uh, look who uh, is enjoying a big league ball game. Giancarlo Stanton out of the dugout, rooting on his teammates. 27 home runs, 67 RBIs. Hasn't played since June 26th with the hand injury. Matt Kemp takes outside ball one. Matt, of course, last night. Big fly. Home run to center field. Went back to back with. Yonder Alonzo also had a double. That one scoots away from Real Muto. And one and one to Kemp. Did not like that call from the easy to hear Tom Hallion. Marlins 11 and 11 since Stanton got hurt. One of the absolute best players in baseball. Fun to watch, no doubt about it. It's just a shame all the injuries. There's one there in particular you can't really, well, you absolutely can't fault him, or you can't fault the guy getting hurt anyway, but getting hit in the face, remember that one? Hey. Scary moment last year, since July 12th, when Stanton and D. Gordon were injured. He said, playing about 500 ball, actually scoring more runs per game. Both guys at the top of the leaderboards in a lot of the offensive categories in the National League, but Marlins had too many other guys let them down. 1 2 to Kemp, and Matt hits it through for a base hit to left. So Arte stops at second, back to back singles tonight. And a couple of guys on for San Diego here in the first. Hey, the singles are great, but it'd be nice to have an extra base hit mixed in there to bring somebody around as multiple base runners as look at the barrel of that bat staying level through the zone and finding that hole on the left side. Not a lot of movement on the swing of Matt Kemp. A quiet stance, a quiet approach, keeping that head quiet as well and getting good results. So good opportunity for the Padres against David Phelps here in the first inning. Kemp on first base, Solarte on second, and Justin Upton, who was back in the starting lineup last night, is out there for a second consecutive game in that familiar cleanup spot. And he swings through that offering, nothing in one. Phelps is going to have to be careful with his location of the fastball. He tops out, tops out that is at 93. 
He's living around 91 or so, so he's got to really live on those corners. Oh, and that first pitch right down the middle. That one on the corner and strike two. Thirty three of Justin Upton's forty nine runs batted in coming in these situations. Solarte's at second. Kemp at first. In the air center field the sinking liner will fall in front of Yelich. Solarte will be held and the Padres will have the bases loaded here in the first. Back to back to back singles Solarte Kemp and Upton. And the Padres continuing to put some nice swings on pitches from David Phelps. 0 2 mistake. And Justin Upton knows that, you know, okay, I've got to protect. If he bounces a breaking ball, I've got to be really disciplined. But if it's down the middle, hey, I'll take a shorter swing. It's still an aggressive swing, but more under control. Ball is hit. Got to kind of hold up a little bit. You never know if Yelich is going to come in and snag that one. Everybody moves up 90 feet. Bases are FOP. Full of Padres blowing a point oh eight. Alonzo hit his third home run of the season last night. It was a no doubter out to right off of Dan Heron. Just smoked it. That was with one out in the fifth, and on the very next pitch, Matt Kemp would go back to back. That one tails back, hits the inside corner, one and one. You know, part of the success of a hitter, I would imagine, is not trying to do too much in the situation. Bases are loaded, only one out. Yonder just put a good swing on it. You see the numbers there with the bases loaded. He's got to realize all the pressures on Phelps. Not a good situation for Phelps. He's got to come to him. That grand slam for Alonzo, June 6th in Cincinnati. And now ahead in the count, two balls and a strike. Solarte, Kemp, and Upton have all singled here in the first. Good take on that last off speed pitch from Phelps. Not even close. Just spit on it. Yonder started each of the first two games of this series in the two hole. Now batting in the fifth spot tonight. And a nice pitch from Phelps, two and two. That is a good pitch. That was a changeup at 83. Tremendous movement, great location. in three balls and two strikes with the bases loaded Eric Norris on deck Phelps hasn't been the winning pitcher since June 16th. Gone back and forth in and out of the rotation a little. 3 2 reaches for it, hits it in the air, foul, and out of play. We'll do it again. Is this a ball? It's a changeup. It's high, trying to get on top of it. Definitely would have been a ball. And he gets another hack at it. Throwing the change up there. Confidence. Another 3 2. And that one's hit well. Out to right center. Yelich is going back. Still going back. And at the wall, he makes the catch. Alonzo missing his second grand slam of the season by a foot or two. But he puts the Padres in front 1 0 here in the first. Just missed. It. Last six starts for Phelps, two and four, five ERA. Teams have been knocking him around a little bit. Took the loss Monday night at Arizona. Falling behind, fastball counts, not spotting the fastball, getting knocked around. That's exactly why you see the numbers you see over those last starts. 
for Phelps. Nice job by Matt Kent tagging up going to third base on that long fly ball. So runners on the corners two outs for Norris and the Padre catcher takes strike one. Boy, yonder did not miss by much. <laughs> Put a good swing on it. Nice A.B. Fouled off one three two pitch and hit the other almost 400 feet. Looks like another changeup, didn't it, Jesse? Yeah. Up again and sent it a long way. Gets the call on the outside corner, one and two. Nice night last night for Norris, two for three with a double and a single after the night off on Thursday. He's throwing some off speed stuff and uh, first pitch curveball this at bat. Looked like a curveball. That's something off speed here. Saw a guy last night, Dan Heron, who's not going to blow you away with the velocity. Yeah, exactly. Similar story tonight with Phelps, and got to guess that's off speed. Slider. Tried to uh, throw that slider on the inside part of the plate. The idea of that slider, right handed hitter, right handed pitcher, the slider on the inside part. The idea there, what a pitcher wants, is to have that hitter kind of give up on it like it's going to come in on him, but then it hits that inside part of the plate, breaks across the inside part of the plate. Slider. Again, and Norris gets a piece of it. So you're, you're talking about what the pitcher's trying to do to get the hitter to give up on it, as you said. Exactly. Let's say you're the pitcher. Yeah. You know, I'm the hitter. When you throw that slider here, initially a ball coming in, the hitter's going to kind of give up on it a little bit, and then all of a sudden, bang. Got it. Right on the inside corner. And then Tom Hallian he's hoping. brings him up. It's a good one. It is a good one. Hallian. Norris swings through a fastball. Nice pitch again from Phelps. And he strikes out the Padre catcher to end the inning. But the Padres get one here in the bottom of the first. John Hervey Solarte, Matt Kemp, and Justin Upton with back-to-back -back singles. And then Yonder Alonso with a long sack fly. one nothing. Inside the clubhouse, they changed Eric Norris to Norris Norris Rex. Well, Jan Hervis Solarte was saying slow Arte because the guys like to have a little fun that, hey, he may not be the fastest guy on the team. Well, we came home this homestand, and it's now back. It's now just says Solarte. Why? Because he feels like he's proven he's got some speed. In fact, during that last at-bat when he was at first, his buddies and Alexia Marista and Abraham Almonte were yelling at him, hey, steal, steal. <laughs> <laughs> So it's no longer slow art today. 
medium fast. He joked maybe medium fast, Arte. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he does have a stolen base this year, Chris. He's one for one. It's not just about speed, trying to steal a base, right? No, I mean, it's it helps. Being, it's being smart. There are a lot of base runners through the course of history that don't have blazing speed but are smart about running the bases. Pick your spots. I like medium fast starts. I like that. Yeah, that's good. He's embracing the thing. He gets it. There's strike one to Derek Dietrich, the third baseman for the Marlins. Can't hit last night in the seventh, was hit by a pitch. Yeah, those are little things, right? Keep a clubhouse loose over the course of a long season. Yeah, that's the great thing about baseball. Getting on each other. You find out what personalities guys have. And believe me, you find the buttons to push to get them going, to get them hot. That's part of the fun. Get under their skin a little bit. It's, a little, it's all in fun, right? My understanding, Norris sort of the ringleader of the, uh, mm -hmm. the name tag revolution. And Derek Norris has that type of personality to where it's under the radar. He doesn't get high. He doesn't get low. He's he's like the stealth guy. He could pull off one of the biggest gags and he'll just have straight stone face walk by. Just after setting somebody up or say something one liner just turn and walk away. I like it. Full count to Dietrich. James Shields has sort of taken on the uh, the role of the ringleader amongst the pitchers, the starters at least. Norris, among others, with the position players. Matt Kemp, a lot of new guys playing big roles in the clubhouse for the Padres this year. If this team continues to try and come together, leadoff walk to Dietrich as Kennedy loses him. Well, Ian uh, lost him on the fastball, but the fastball inside has been a big key early on, trying to tie up the left-handed hitters. Yelich hit that one to shortstop. Bohr checked his swing on that one. And then the right side, hey, Ian Kennedy's going to get the call there. But he, here's the point. He's challenging these Marlin hitters by saying, here's my fastball. Prove to me that you can hit it. Then I'll make an adjustment. Fish had a couple of guys on in the first inning. Struck out Michael Morse to end the frame. And he blows that fast by. Fast ball by Real Muto, the catcher. Hey, the leadoff walk. Only 91. Ian Kennedy, a little sneaky fast. Different points of this year, right? The velocity's been in different places for mm -hmm. Kennedy. Yeah, I, I, we've seen him hit 93. Consistently about 91, 92 ish. Good spin rate out of the hand. He spins the ball really well. Meaning? Meaning that the ball has a tendency to keep its life on the distance from out of the hand to the glove. More spin rate. That's one of the hot topics nowadays in baseball and the pitching world. Your front office types talk a lot about spin rate. On the ground to third. Medium fast, Arte to second for one, <laughs> back to first, double play. Around the horn, 5-4-3. Nice job by Jan Hervey Solarte starting the twin killing. Uh, perfectly hit, perfectly thrown. That's around the horn, nicely done. The Padres and Ian Kennedy, usually a fly ball pitcher. He gets a key ground ball there. Last seven, boy, nice numbers. And, and Jesse, your favorite stat, OP. Opponent's batting average. I don't know if it's my favorite, but I like it. Good. good. ERA under three over a distance like that. Nine, ten starts. That's good stuff in today's day and age. Shortstop Echevarria in his familiar number eight spot. Last night he was 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts after he had a loud Thursday night in this series. Here's another thing I've noticed already, Jesse. Yes. Tom Hallian, the umpire behind the plate, he's given a ball, maybe a ball and a half width off the plate. Go right back out there. Tipped into the mitt of Derek Norris. That's strike three. And strikeout number three for Ian Kennedy. Got the ground ball double play. one nothing, San Diego.
colleague, a mentor, a gracious friend, and always, always one of the truly great sports broadcasters in history. And now, another richly deserved honor. You go into the broadcaster's wing of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Dick. Very nice from Bob Costas, another one of the titans of this industry. Congratulating our Dick Enberg, who received the Ford C. Frick Award from the National Baseball Hall of Fame today in Cooperstown, New York. Get to be a part of the player inductions tomorrow. And uh, just an incredible weekend for Dick. Well said by Bob Costas, as always. And once again, extended congratulations to, to the professor. Must be uh, very overwhelming, but uh, hope he's having a good time in, in Cooperstown. Well, the speech is done. He got that yes. out of the way. Now he can relax and enjoy himself, and we'll have some of the speech for you coming up a little bit later on tonight. Now the pressure's off. You yep. did your performance, so to speak. Now you sit back. Have a social sparkler. Yeah. And enjoy Yoda. the rest of the weekend. Yeah. Maybe Yoda can hang with you. Jed Jerko takes outside. Ball two. Padres second baseman came in to play defense in the seventh last night. That worked out pretty nicely. Final out of the night. Made a great play on a ground ball hit by Ichiro. Outstanding. To finish it off. That was a great way to finish off that game. Marlins had multiple base runners. Jerko had started 18 straight games since coming back from AAA El Paso before that quote unquote night off last night. Found a way to contribute. It was the range, the throw, all of it. Everything. He's looking for a kid to get the ball to. Yeah, good for you. Swing and a miss. Jerko goes down. Second strikeout for Phelps. One away here in the bottom of the second. There you go. Nicely done. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Clint Barmas takes strike one from Phelps. Barmas was hit by a pitch last night as he was back in the starting lineup. How do you think that feels? Seriously. Can't feel good. A little chopper and a nice play by Dietrich over at third. Throws him out. Looked like Barmas might be able to get that one over the third baseman into left field, but good elevation. Two away. Time now for great moments in Padres history brought to you by Geico. May 8th of last season, second inning, two outs. Ian Kennedy goes deep off of Jacob Turner of these Miami Marlins first career home run for Ian last year against the Marlins now this year against the Marlins and he takes strike one from Phelps do we have the same scenario right here I was just going to say two outs in the second inning hits that one well to right center not going to be a homer but it could be extra bases Kennedy's going to let it roll all the way to the wall as Gillespie's got to go and get it. And he's into second base with a two-bagger. Tenth double of Ian Kennedy's career. Like sitting against the Marlins. Nice easy swing taking Phelps the opposite way. The outfielders are playing shallow. How can you not respect the power of this kid, Ian Kennedy? The guy's in a home run. They're playing shallow. He takes the pitch where it's... Pitched and splits that right center field gap. Turns over the lineup. Top of the order. Second of the year. And he's all smiles on second base. Will Venable grounded out his first time up. That one's up the middle and it's going to get through. Kennedy's being waved. Yelich approaches the ball. He won't have a play. And the Marlins add to the lead. The Padres add to the lead. Two to nothing. A two-out double from the pitcher, Kennedy, and Venable follows with an RBI single. Will Venable not wasting any time, being aggressive in the count. You see they were playing him over the right side. Prado playing him to shift over towards the first base side a little bit. 
He beats the shift. Ian Kennedy helping his own cause with the bat and coming across with run number two. In the first game of this series, the Marlins chased Tyson Ross in the sixth inning when they had five straight two-out hits. Padre is doing some two-out damage here in the second inning tonight against Phelps, and it all started with that guy, the pitcher. Hey, keep it going to give the right-hander a little bit of a blow on the bench. Running those bases, the legs can get a little heavy. It all happened pretty quickly, and Corey Spangenberg on the disabled list, making himself of use. Now that's a teammate right there. <laughs> on the ground is second. Prado has it, and that'll be it for the Padres here in the second inning, but they add on a run in each of the first two frames. Venable plates Kennedy. Genberg receiving the Ford C. Frick Award today. He was introduced by a Hall of Famer, Joe Morgan. A voice for all seasons, Dick Enberg defined what a championship play-by-play -play broadcaster could bring to a game. I give you the 2015 Ford C. Frick Award winner, Mr. Dick Enberg. <laughs> Now, as earlier today in Cooperstown, as uh, Dick adds his name to the list of some of the uh, absolute giants in baseball broadcasting, recent winners going back, of course, to Jerry Coleman in 2005, John Miller of the Giants 2010, Tim McCarver all of his years on the national telecast. You saw Dave Van Horn's name. Mm -hmm. He's with the Marlins after a long career with the Expos that began in 1969 with that expansion franchise. Good baseball guys, even better people on that list. Always some good ones. And you know, you look at each name, and I could each, with each of them, I could hear hear their play-by-play. -play, sure. Hear their anal analysis. You know, if you're a baseball fan, you, you get to know. And one of the luxuries we have, Jesse, is traveling around the league is to meet the guys that are on that list. The pitcher Phelps fouls it off, one and two from Kennedy. I mean, it's the absolute pinnacle of this thing. Mm -hmm. Very big day for Dick Enberg, and we offer him again our congratulations. Ball and two strikes to Phelps. Holds off on the curveball, two and two. Good tight breaking ball, even though it was a ball, had some good snap to it. Just didn't roll up there. Phelps gave up a Kennedy double in the bottom of the second, and I was trying to return the favor a little bit here. Decent battle to start off the third inning.
Phelps spent the first couple years of his career with the Yankees, not getting many at bats. All three of his career base hits coming this season. And he got it. Nice pitch for me and Kennedy. Fourth strikeout as he gets Phelps to open up the third. Got a game break coming up. Phil's Cubs from Wrigley Field. You want to stay tuned for that one. You may have heard what happened at Wrigley Field this afternoon. It's exciting. Stay tuned. Historic. Mm -hmm. Lead off man Gillespie playing right field tonight. Struck out looking to open the game and he takes breaking ball strike nothing and one. Hey Ian Kennedy's got the snappy yacker working tonight. He's getting up on top getting through it good rotation. Good break on the old number two. Kennedy had such a good year last year and in talking to him during the season in 2014 he said yeah that curveball is a big difference for him. Mm -hmm. 12 to 6 rotation. Watch Derek Norris frame it right on the outside corner. Beautiful. Fastball away. In the air, shallow right. A convergence, and Jerko takes command and makes the catch. Two gone. Curveballs and fastballs away to right handed batters. That's been the uh, formula so far. He just seems to be throwing the fastball and once again having the Marlin hitters try to hit it. They're not catching up to it. Martin Prado now 31 years old made his big league debut with the Braves back in 06. Went to Arizona in the Justin Upton trade. And the Yankees and now the Marlins hit five straight. I was an all-star back in 2010 with the Braves. Change up in the dirt, one and two. Very versatile player, too, for Prado. That's one of the luxuries that Dan Jennings and the Marlins have with Prado. Play, can pretty much play every position, except up the middle, pitcher, catcher, center. And when chases Kemp back a couple of steps, and with the Swedes on, he makes the catch for the third out of the inning. One, two, three, third for Ian Kennedy. Two nothing pods.
Cubs, the Rancho Bernardo guy. Cole Hamels out on the hill, no hitter, one out in the eighth. Oh, what a play out in center field by Herrera. And then for the final out, Chris Bryant sends him all the way back. And at the last moment, Herrera fell down, still made the catch. And Cole Hamels throws a no hitter at Wrigley Field as the Phillies beat the Cubs five to nothing. That last out. How did Herrera feel when that ball he <laughs> felt like he overran it and then had to turn on the brakes and ball. eat some more dust? Ball one to wow. Matt Kemp. Cubs had gone a long time since the last time they were no hit. Kemp reaches for that one and fouls it back as we take a look at our Arco top tier profile. Matt Kemp with the third most extra base hits among National League batters this month. I guess really second most behind Jay Bruce and Carlos Gonzalez. As the summer heats up, so does Matt Kemp. Keep it going. I see what you did there. Old glory. Sorry about being free. Independent. Kemp was jammed. Did a nice job trying to fight it off. Greatest country on earth, man. Believe it. Where else would you get a Nelly post-game concert? USA, that's where. They'll be out at the park at the park after the game tonight. When's the last time you heard, like, Nelly's going to perform at the Kremlin? <laughs> Ain't going to happen. Here at Petco? Oh, yeah. 2-2 to Kemp. Talk about all those extra base hits. 11 of them coming in his last 12 games. So basically one a night. Had two last night. And fouls that one back. They're getting ready for the Nelly concert out at the park at the park. Was that a DJ booth right there? The, the lower right there? I think that's for some of the accompaniment, yeah. So that's where he spins the... Uh... No, I don't think he's spinning. He's, he's singing. He's performing. Full deal. Part of baseball night in San Diego. That's a good at bat by Matt Kent working it full. Lays off and ball four. Like you said, nice job by Matt Kemp, who singled in his first at bat on base for the second time tonight. We we're talking about Cole Hamels and that no hitter for the Phillies. The 13th in Philadelphia history, which of course goes back forever. And the last time the Cubs were no hit, 1965. Sandy Koufax, perfect game in September of that year up at Dodger Stadium. And it's a long streak for the Cubs. Yeah, he might be traded as the trading deadline approaches us. And another little nugget, the yeah. last time that the Cubs were no hit at Wrigley, Milt Pappas threw it against the Padres. It was 1960, 68 or 69. Milt Pappas. That was the last no-hitter at Wrigley. Mm -hmm. And the last time the Cubs were no-hit. 65, the Koufax perfecto. 2-0 to Justin Upton, and Real Muto wants to go out and have a chat with Phelps. Certainly a dangerous situation. Padres got a run in the first inning. Three straight singles to load the bases. And then Yonder Alonso, a very deep sacrifice fly out to center. Last inning, a two-out double for Ian Kennedy. And then Will Venable brought him home. It was a very dangerous count here for Phelps. He's got to be careful. 2-0 count, fastball count, power hitter. Ball and three and a dandy. Away, away, away to Justin Upton. Alonzo just missed the Grand Slam last time. He is next. Swinging 3-0, and oh, and he pops it up. On the infield, the shortstop, Echeverria, makes the catch. One away. All right, Mud, tonight's cold, hard facts are brought to you by clean, crisp Coors Light. And our facts involve the Padres and... The three home runs in a game did it last night. Only the Brewers and Dodgers 
have more games in which they've hit at least three home runs this season. Padres need to get in the double digits in that category. We mentioned it in our open. Padres are six and three when they hit three home runs in a game. Hey, homering just once, 31 and 18. Wow. Good things happen when you hit the ball over the fence. Big jump for Kemp over at first base as that one's fouled back. First one from Brett Wallace. Then Alonzo and Kemp went back to back all well over 400 feet last night. Very nice. Kemp was off and running there. Got a huge jump off Phelps. Alonzo fouled it off. Side one and one. Phelps trying to bury that fastball in. Be a pretty good pitch. Song says San Francisco. She was going. Yeah. We're going to San Francisco. I was thinking. Yeah. I thought that was Jenny for Forrest Gump. Talked about shadows earlier. Now really the only place with any. Uh, Sunlight on the field is out and right. That could be a little funky for Gillespie. In and out of the darkness. Other way off the bat of Alonzo, one and two. Kemp's done a good job when he's tried to go this year. He and Justin Upton both. Mm -hmm. Phelps doing a nice job mixing it up. What I mean by that, in and out, out and in to Yonder Alonzo. You've got to recognize if they strike short and quick to that baseball, hit it where it's pitched. Got him. Nice pitch right on the corner. Hallion rings up Yonder Alonso. Two away. According to Fox Tracks, it's a pretty good pitch. The two seamer, it looks like, out of the hand and brings it back. High enough inside corner for the called strike. And there you see it sponsored by Honda. Fox tracks the pitch number four down and in. Derek Norris, two outs, Kemp on first and a ground ball to third. They go the short way as Dietrich gets the fielder's choice for the third out. Two nothing Padres. We'll go to the fourth. Brett Wallace at third base. Yes, his first start in the big leagues for the Padres this year at third base. Played a little bit in El Paso. Set up. Good position. 
goes to his right, snags it. The ball hit hard enough where he's got plenty of time to complete the 5-3 to three put out in last night's game. Not only doing it with the wood, but flashing a little leather to Sir with glove. Fun night for Brett Wallace last night, certainly. As the Padres beat the Marlins 3-1. to one. Team effort, three solo homers, good pitching from Kashner. Benoit Kimbrell closed it out. As they even this series, and now Ian Kennedy working with a 2 nothing lead, and he delivers a curveball strike to Christian Yelich to start the top of the fourth. Ian Kennedy has got that feel for the curveball tonight, and when he throws it for strike one, watch out. Norris sets up away, and the fastball is fouled back, nothing in two. Talking about Cole Hamels earlier. Yes. As you take a look at what Yelich has done in the last three weeks or so, one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Yeah, I saw some people today saying, oh, that's really going to help his his value on the trade market, <laughs> the no-hitter today. These guys, the veterans, they're known quantities, right? Something like that isn't going to, you know, change what the Phillies may or may not be able to get for him, is it? Absolutely not. In fact, he could have given up eight runs in two and a third, and there's still people going to call the Phillies, hey, we want Cole Hamels. Yeah. I know I would. I think twice before in Major League history has a guy been traded the same season he's thrown the no-hitter. And I think both other times the no-hitter came after the trade. So if Hamels is traded from Philadelphia, be the first guy in Major League history to be traded in a season after throwing a no-no. Justin Bohr singled his first time up. And another first pitch curveball. A little bit low, 1 0. Bohr, like Yelich, is hot. Nice ball strike ratio for Ian Kennedy so far. Hits the outside corner. Bohr this month, 16 runs batted in. Tied for the National League lead in the month of July. Stanton, McGee, Jose Fernandez. Taking this one in from the dugout. Three balls and a strike. Another changeup from Kennedy. Well, look who's having some fun. James Shields. He's got the hoodie. Kimberl on the left. And James has got the, the, the sunglasses backwards on the back of his head. They're tossing seeds, trying to some type of competition. See, that's what's great on the bench. <laughs> Somebody's always the ringmaster as far as trying to develop a game. Who can toss the most seeds to stay on the rail right here? So how wide is that rail, you think? Like two inches, maybe? Oh, it's a little more than that, I would say. Oh, okay. Maybe two and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> two and five-eighths. <laughs> Strike out number five for Ian Kennedy as we check in with Chris Bunn and Chris. Hey, Jesse, you were showing the play from Brett Wallace yesterday, and I talked to Pat Murphy about what it was like recruiting him when he was 18 years old and made his visit to Arizona State. He said he was highly sought after, but... When he came to ASU, he committed on the spot. And Murphy said, I remember him telling me, hey, coach, I know one thing, and it's I can hit. Proved it last night. For sure. A bat guy, no question. Had a great year with Houston a couple of years ago. Brett Wallace. And he signed this minor league free agent deal with the Padres in the offseason, knowing he'd have an opportunity mm -hmm. to compete for a big league job. Didn't happen for him out of spring training, but he stuck with it in El Paso and now getting the chance. A little bit of big league experience, left-handed bat with some pop. There are always teams that could use something like that. Morse in the air, right side. Kemp gives it a look, but it's going to find a seat. Those fans, they're dealing with the sun. Yes. On those foul balls. They need to bring the flip downs. Or at least some eye black. Good call. Good call. At least bring some shades. Kennedy quickly ahead of Morse, and the 0-2 is just a little bit up. You see what Ian did there? Derek Norris gave the sign, fastball in and up, out of the crouch, and that's exactly where he threw it. 
he hit his spot. And if you're going to miss there, you'd rather miss a little up. And that's what he did. Slider away. Change up. Fastball away. Get it out there. Up the middle. Hard hit for Morris. Maybe a little bit too much of the plate. Two out single for the Marlin left fielder. Ball looked like he knuckled off the bat of Morris. Squared that one up nicely. Hey, but if you keep in the yard, you win the war there. He wanted it down and away, and this ball leaks. It's a four seam fastball. You can see on contact, that's over the heart of the plate. Look at the top spin on that ball. Big strong dude. <laughs> that's that's getting some top spin there. That top hand getting on it. Bam. Looks like a tennis player with the forehand getting that rotation. I like that. Little Roger Federer. Yeah. Ivan Gulagon. Two outs, runner on first for the third baseman, Dietrich. He's had a good week and a half, as you saw, and he takes ball one as fastball misses away. Dietrich hit by a pitch in his only plate appearance last night, and he's walked so far here this evening. That'll work down. Last two pitches, Derek Norris clearly wanted the target down, wanted the pitch down, he's missing up. Dietrich into his in the box routine. Got a lot going on. Hits it well, but foul out of play left side. Two and two. See, he's got a lot of movement, but when that ball starts coming in, he's got his hands, his body's quiet. Prior to the pitch, yes, a lot of movement. Getting that rhythm going. Some guys will be as still as a statue. Other guys want to get that rhythm going. He's got an open stance, and then once that pitcher starts to deliver, gets the top knee, squares up, and the hands are back in the lock and loaded position. Beautiful shot. Time called at the plate. 6.45. That's what time it is. You well, asked for time. Uh, Norris sets up away. Misses away. And now a full count, three and two. Well, now Yonder Alonzo will play behind the runner at first base, Michael Morris. He'll go on the pitch. Let's we'll see what Ian Kennedy throws here to Derek Dietrich. Gonna stick with the fastball away. Shook him off to the changeup. Morris goes and the 3 2 is swung on and missed. Kennedy got him with the change. Six strikeout for Ian Kennedy, and the Marlins leave one here in the fourth. When we come back, we'll hear from Dick Enberg. He's in Cooperstown, New York, and we get to check in on the Hall of Famer.
Thank you, Joe. What a gamer, Joe Morgan. No surprise there at all. You know, oh my has been a, an expression, a great friend of mine for over 50 years of my career, and never have those two words expressed more personal joy than at this very moment. Man, I thought I'd get all the way to the end before I started to get emotion. <laughs> Scully called me when the announcement was made, and he said, only one piece of advice, Enberg, no crying at Cooperstown. And start of Dick Enberg's speech as he received the Fort C. Frick Award for Excellence in Broadcasting today from the National Baseball Hall of Fame. That's a big deal. And how can you not get emotional yourself yeah. just listening to that? Jerko on one big op to Echeverria might have broken the bat. Throws him out and Jed retired for the first out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Gets Clint Barmas to the plate and you know need seeing some of this behind the scenes action with Dick up in Cooperstown. Getting to hear some of the speech and share more of that with you as the night goes on. A view from across the street. 352 days till the All-Star game. Can't wait for that one. Armist takes strike one. Clint grounded out to third base. His first time up. Padres got a run in the first, run in the second. They lead two to nothing as they try and win a second consecutive game against the Marlins. Her ball from Phelps low, one and one. Yeah, I want to correct myself on something. Oh, I just got a message from my good friend and mentor, Bob Chandler. Hey. Love Bob, by the way. He watches every game. Uh, Mill Pappas, we talked about that no hitter. Yeah. He threw for the Cubs. It was yeah. September 1972 against the Padres at Wrigley. He had a perfect game with two outs in the, in the ninth, 3 2 count on Larry Stahl. And Bruce Freming was the home plate umpire. It was a very close pitch. He called it ball four to end the perfect game. But he still got the no-hitter. Yeah. Eight and two-thirds. Yes. And a walk. So thanks, Bob. Appreciate that. That was the last no-hitter at Wrigley before today. Cole Hamels. Hey, imagine if he's traded to the Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, is a possibility sure. based on everything you read and hear. What's that like in the clubhouse? Like if it's in the next couple days especially? Could you just hear the fans in Chicago after that game? <laughs> Get them on our side. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, they were cheering. What size Wrigley. jersey does he wear? <laughs> Full count from Phelps to Barmas. And Clint hits that one in the air to right field. All shadow now. Gillespie makes the catch two away. Hey fans, here's where you can have some fun via the tweet. Tweet your strongest fan photo. Got to use the hashtag. That's hashtag SD Data Strong Fan. You just might end up seeing yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Have some fun with it. It's brought to you by T Mobile. Two outs for Ian Kennedy, who was in this very situation back in the second inning. Two outs, nobody on. He doubled, and then Will Venable brought him home. Got to love a pitcher starting a two out rally. You always like to keep track of what's happening in your neighborhood. And, and right next door in the Marlin television booth, Clay Hensley, the former fish, hanging out with uh, Tommy Hutton, Rich Waltz, Fox Sports Florida. That's a nice trifecta right there. Three good eggs. Great eggs. Kennedy lays off. Hey, nice take. Two and one. Mm -hmm. Takes again. This time a strike. Two two from Phelps. 
And Barmas reaches for it, slowly hit, Phelps off the mound, collects himself and throws high. Barmas is going to have to get back to first. He does. And Jose Valentin doing a nice job hitting the deck, getting out of the way. Kennedy reaching for the second time here tonight. He just rushed it. And you know what? Ian really wasn't sprinting down the line. And, you know, Ian Kennedy, when he rounded, he rounded first base, Jesse, as soon as he makes that one move towards second base, he is a live runner. He notices right there. So you either got to do one of two things, go to second base or get back. That's why they went back to first base, but Ian gets back safely. Good awareness by Kennedy, took the big turn. Jose Valentin had to get, get down and get dirty, huh? <laughs> Venable takes strike one. So an error on Phelps. And we'll get you updated on the Dodgers and the Mets in a couple of moments. L.A. taking the first two games of that series at City Field. Inside of Venable, one and two. Yeah. Phelps hasn't been overpowering or anything tonight, no. but he's been effective. Mm -hmm. Two seamers, two seamers in the lefties, two seamers away to lefties, breaking balls every now and then, just mixing it up. Not falling into a pattern. As a starter this year, his ERA on the road is approaching five. Padres have a couple looking for more here in the fourth. 2-2, two, two, and he got him. Nice hook to get Will Venable to swing and miss. Fourth strikeout for Phelps, and we'll go to the fifth at Petco. 2-0. Find some offense. Well, they found it. Daniel Murphy's two-run homer made it 10 to New York. Now 15 to 2 Mets in the eighth inning. One of the worst offensive teams in baseball. 20 hits tonight against the Dodgers as we take a look at the National University standings. And in the National League West, the Giants beat the A's earlier today behind Madison Bumgarner. They are two and a half in back of the Dodgers. That's about to be two. I think that's about to be two. Padres third place in the division. Yeah, once again, you look at that standings and you look at uh, what teams are going to do as we approach the trade deadline. It's going to be interesting. It's always interesting, is it not? Always. Even when it doesn't end up.
being a super active deadline, the run-up to it, and of course the deadline now six days away next it's the Friday. Anticipation. Right. And all of the rumors and the things swirling around and some of it I'm sure has some validity, but there's a lot of nonsense that gets thrown out as well. And one of the fun things is we don't know which things are nonsense and which aren't. Bottom third for the Marlins against Ian Kennedy here in the fifth. Real Muto, Echeverria, and Phelps. That's ball one to the catcher. That six-game hitting streak is a career high. 0 for 1 so far tonight, grounded into a double play. It went around the horn, and there's a strike, 1 and 1. So from the player perspective, all these guys can do, right, when they know their name is being talked about, you, you just got to tune it all out. Is there anything else? You have to, and I'll tell you one thing for sure. They talk about it in the clubhouse. They talk about it during batting practice. They Grounder to Solarte. And a nice play by Jan Hervey Solarte. Romuto runs pretty well. And twice is hit it down to third base, and twice is retired. That's a beautiful play. Solarte, you see that ball on the second half kind of checked up on a little bit. He has to make an adjust, adjustment there to complete the play. Take a look now at the Cholula flamethrower. Ian Kennedy mentioned the velocity earlier. He's gotten it up to 93 tonight. It's mild chunky. Sure. But effective. Oh, it works. Back of the tongue. Mm -hmm. A little hot. One out for the shortstop, Echeverria. And he's first pitch swinging. Pretty routine for Matt Kemp, who has lost the shades now that he's in the shadows to away. I mean, to get back to your point regarding the trade deadline, I remember being in a situation when you'd be in the clubhouse or your trainer's room or on your locker and somebody says, hey, uh, you look good in a Cardinal uniform. <laughs> or, hey, Yankees just called. You're on the hot seat. Uh, guys poking fun at one another. It's talked about. Standing in the outfield shagging. Hey, you think that ball will go out if you hit that ball at Yankee Stadium? <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Just poking fun at guys. Interesting time of year. And it's rolling now. We've had a few moves the last couple of days. And you can expect quite a few more between now and next Friday. That shot taken from the Fox Sports San Diego drone piloted by Michael Odino. It's a good hover. Very it stable. Is, yeah. That's one of the few times he's stable. Pitcher Phelps 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And on the ground over Kennedy into center field for a base hit. Both pitchers with base, hit, base hits tonight. Kennedy a double in the second and now a two out single from Phelps in the fifth. Yeah, well we have a minute and a reminder 2015 MLB trade deadline is around the corner. We just got done talking about and this week. SD Live goes in depth with all the inside trade rumors and news around America's pastime. It's Tuesday after Padres Live on Fox Sports San Diego. I believe Mike Pomerantz hosts that show. Does a fine job. Does a great job. In that show. Enjoy the, yeah. Enjoying the big league ball game. Lead off man Gillespie. Kennedy kind of fell down a little bit after that pitch. A little landscaping there after the landing spot on that mound. off at a play one and one remember the little nugget I focused on early in the game Jesse regarding Ian Kennedy and the fastball sure well our lovely and talented statistician tonight Greta Wall just handed me a note every hit tonight for the Marlins which is four has been on a fastball except for Boar singles a breaking ball okay but uh, hasn't really hurt Ian Kennedy a double and the rest singles doing a fine job Gillespie on the ground, nicely positioned. Jerko flips to Barmas, and that's the third out in the top of the fifth. Still 2 0 Padres.
did arrive at age 18. Coincidentally, another 18-year-old directly out of a Baltimore high school took my dream job in right field for the Tigers, Al Kaline. And how did he do? Uh, my friends in high school and college still remind me, hey, Anberg, you only talked a good game. I guess it all worked out. My dream has taken me to a great place, the Ford Frick Award in Baseball's Hall of Fame. Oh, doctor. Oh, my. And how about that? Beautiful conclusion to the speech by Dick Enberg. I like that. And you know what? Jerry Coleman, Dick Enberg, Mel Allen. And as nervous as Dick was prior to going to Cooperstown, we've only heard a couple of snippets of his speech. I'd have to put perfect on that speech, the way it was delivered and what was said. From his heart to the piece of paper and then to the audience, to all of us. And well, no well surprise. Done. Well done. No surprise at all. What a career for Dick Enberg. That's just the baseball stuff, of course, and that's what he's being recognized for today and this whole weekend, really, in Cooperstown. A lot of years with the Angels, and now in his sixth season here with us in San Diego. Congratulations, Dick. Sixth, sixth Hall of Fame. It's crazy. It is. Six different Halls of Fame for one guy. Yeah. That is awesome. He's in the Strawberry Lemonade Hall of Fame. I believe it's up in La Jolla. Yeah. Ground ball off the bat of Solarte and back to Phelps who throws him out. One away here in the bottom of the fifth. Padres with a 2 nothing lead on the Marlins. What do you make of Phelps tonight? Just kind of doing his thing, right? He is. And as I mentioned earlier, not falling in any patterns and dicing the place the plate very nicely. Um, even though the Padres lead by two, I mean, this is still somewhat, it's close. It's a pitcher's duel. Ian Kennedy is pitching his heart out. But Phelps doing the best he can to make quality pitches and mixing it up nicely. I always wonder about these guys that are starters and relievers and then back into the rotation mm -hmm. as he delivers strike one to Matt Kemp and you know, how that can affect the mental and the physical preparation. Sure. It can't be the easiest thing to do within a season. No, it's not. And it's a different mentality because as a starter, a starter usually has three or four pitches, right? So they can set up a hitter two or three times around the lineup. Last night, Matt Kemp, one pitch after Yonder Alonso home run. Took Dan Heron out to center field here at Petco Park. That's 11th home run of the year. Big swing at that slider, one and two. Good slider, good location. And then when you come out of the bullpen, you want to get in a game and get out of a game as quickly as possible. So you really. You know, sure, you can set up hitters, but you're not going to be facing them two or three times around the lineup. That's why when relievers come in, it's pretty much two pitches. Kemp hits that one well out to left, but Morris can't get there. Goes over his head, and Kemp aboard for the third time tonight. Going to try and make it to second base, and he's out. At first, it looked like Morris had a pretty good beat on it, and then it got over his head, and Kemp decided to go for two. Close at second, he made a pretty good slide to try and get around the tag from Prado. But as of now, that's out number two. This ball is smoked. Some ter serious topspin as well. And as an outfielder, you get to the point of no return. Morse does the right thing. And maybe just a too big of a turnaround first base. Maybe bellied out a little bit too far. And then you got more distance to run and... Trying to do a little matrix here with the hand. Gets him on the right hand. Just got him. Yep. So camp two for two with a couple of singles and a walk. Out seven to four on that throw from Morse to Prado. And Justin Upton with two outs. For Matt Kemp, by the way. That is 31st multi-hit game of the season now. Upton in the air to center field. Yelich has got it lined up. 
Makes the catch, and that's it for the Padres here in the fifth. We go to inning number six, 2-0 San Diego. Alumni Roundtable Edition. And in case you missed it, the Celebrity Golf Championship presented by Marshall Falk. But first is an encore edition of Padres POV. Follow along with Tyson Ross and Yonder Alonso and see how they give back to the community. The world, to be honest. I mean, you know, just having my teammates here is just a, a dream come true. You know, it's, it's just a, a great opportunity for everybody. All kinds of fun Padres stuff coming up tonight on Fox Sports San Diego after this game. And, of course, after the game here at the ballpark, Nelly is going to be out at the park at the park. And on Kurt Bavacqua's post-game social hour today, it'll be a family affair. Brett and Bob Boone together. Very nice. With KB. Five shutout innings for Ian Kennedy. Got to stay tuned for that one. All kinds of things to talk about with those guys. As Ian delivers a fastball in the dirt to Martin Prado. Underway here in the sixth. Talked about Phelps just sort of rolling along, doing his thing. Ian Kennedy, very good mm -hmm. through five. On the ground to the right side. Easy for Jerko. And Jet throws out a frustrated Martin Prado, one away. Only one really stressful inning. That was in the first, the double and the single. Two runners left on base. Close captioning tonight is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. Ian in his last start, Monday night against the Giants, went six, allowed two runs, struck out six, got the win. Oh, he's doing great on the pitch count as well. This will be the 79th pitch. Yelich in the air to center, and on the liner, Venable came in and had to go over his head. All the way to Wall, and Yelich will stop at second after Venable gets it back in pretty quickly. So a misstep there out in center field, and... A two-base hit for Christian Yelich. Will is ticked right now, and this reminds me of what happened in Cincinnati earlier in the year. Happened twice, remember? The next day, Will, Will's very upset. Came in on that ball and realized it was hit harder after the fact. And after the, the next day, in reaction for the pitcher, you know, you think, oh, it's going to be caught. Oh, yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's frustrating. I, I approached Will. I said, hey, just flat out what happened on that play. He goes, I just messed up. I just messed up. No excuses. And he said, that is the worst feeling for an outfielder. To where it should be an out, and all of a sudden you make a bad break on it, you come in on it. And we mention it all the time, too, those line drives to a center fielder that are right tough. at you. So tough. You, because there's, you don't really have anything to, to gauge the depth perception on it. Moore with a liner to right. Kemp makes the catch. Yelich back to second. Two away.
A couple of hard hit line drives off of Kennedy. Even that ball right there kind of looked like Matt Kemp kind of came in a little bit because he caught it way above his head. Will still shaking his head. Okay, it happens. But he said no excuses. I just messed it up. Morris had a two out single his last time up. Struck out to end the first inning. Yelich, by the way, has now reached base in 24 consecutive games. Kennedy's had a couple seven inning starts this year. Trying to finish off the sixth here tonight. And as Mark said, in good shape pitch count wise. Last night, Andrew Kashner went seven, allowed just a run on five hits. And for a team to get on the roll, it starts with the starting pitching. Good outings and ideally long outings as well. Did his job last night. Yep. Rio to Morse. And he takes a strike. You know, Michael Morse. Right out of the Hunter Pence school of wearing your pants. Up above the knee, huh? Yeah. They were teammates briefly. Won a World Series together in San Francisco last year. Big swing, three and two. Yeah, you don't see a lot of guys go over the kneecap. No. It's like a football player. Biker shorts. <laughs> Got him. Up the ladder. It was three and zero to Morris, and Kennedy comes back to strike him out. No harm after the misplay in center field and Ian Kennedy with six good innings and seven strikeouts against Miami. Under Alonzo. Almost a grand slam, a sacrifice fly. That gave the Padres a 1 0 lead in the first inning. Will Venable, an RBI single in the second, pleading Ian Kennedy, who had doubled with two outs. The Padre pitcher helping himself out. And that's all the scoring we've had so far tonight. 2 0 Padres as Alonzo, Norris, and Jerko 
They're scheduled to hit here in the bottom of the sixth inning against David Phelps. And first pitch swinging yonder into the gap in left center. Morse, though, comes over. And he makes the catch. One pitch and one out. In the top of this inning, Kristen Yelich hit a ball to center field. Will Venable misplayed it. And uh, in between innings, quick word for a starting pitcher. Yeah, bad feeling for Will Venable. Obviously going up to Will, uh, Ian Kennedy and apologizing. Hey, hey, dude, sorry about that. And Ian, you know, hey, they got out of the inning. Made some good pitches. Left him stranded out there. But, uh, yeah, bad feeling for any outfielder. Kennedy came back to get board a line out, and he struck out Michael Morse to end the inning. Derek Norris, one out, nobody aboard. And a little bit low from Phelps, 1-0. It's the call with the fastball on the outside corner. One and two. It's been there most of the night from Tom Hallian. Yeah, pretty consistent with that call. He got a call. Not the first time tonight. Outside, ball two. I think most fans... I'm not trying to speak for everybody, but no, go ahead. Sure, I think we all feel that. No, if it's going to be consistent, then it's fine. That's off the plate. Yeah, maybe not the case right here. Norris upset with that one. He's been back there behind the dish trying to get those calls for Kennedy. Hey, we keep promises here, and as promised earlier in the game, selected the data strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag SD Data Strong Fan. For a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Thank you, Miguel. Yeah, the 4th of July hat. Jed Jerko, first pitch swinging, and the curveball is hit in the air to center. Easy for Yelich, and a very quick inning here in the 6th for Phelps. We go to the 7th, still 2-0 Padres. All kinds of accolades and awards, but for a baseball broadcaster, there's nothing more exciting and nothing more meaningful than the Ford C. Frick Award. Congratulations on your body of work, and in particular, your work broadcasting play-by-play -play of Major League Baseball. Vic, congratulations, and welcome to the club. 
2011 Ford C. Frick Award winner Dave Van Horn, longtime Expos television and radio, and now with the Miami Marlins, and has been for quite some time, offering his congratulations. That's a good Dick man Denver. right there. Great man. DVH. Yeah. Ian Kennedy delivers a fastball strike to Derek Dietrich. Left-handed hitting third baseman waits, and Ian's 89th pitch of the night is a fastball high, one and one. Walk in the second inning for Dietrich. He struck out in the fourth, 107 strikeouts for Ian Kennedy here tonight. Right on the outside corner, one and two. Brandon Mauer up in the pen. Good to see Ian out there with a 2 0 lead starting the seventh. The pitch count is at 90 right now. One and two to Dietrich, and he tries to hold up on the curveball. He does. Two and two. Ian's only gone seven innings twice this year. He's making some good pitches. Back in May at San Francisco. And last month here against the Dodgers took a no decision after allowing just a run in seven innings of work against L.A. Oh. Right off the chest of Tom Hallion, the umpire. Kevlar. Kevlar is a good thing. Barely flinched. Kennedy's had a nice rhythm to his game tonight. Gets on the same page with Norris, and the 2-2 is a little bit up. You know, if that pitch number six is up over the plate, it, 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 probably a greater chance of being swung at, don't you think? Sure. He will go up the ladder, get some swings and misses. Did that to get Morris to end the sixth. See how he handles Dietrich on three and two. And it's hit well out to right. Kemp is trying to look up, and that is all he can do. Home run for Derek Dietrich. That's his fifth of the year. It's a two-to-one game in the seventh inning. Well, tonight... Remember early on, Dietrich was trying to throw pitches in. I'm sorry, Kennedy was trying to throw pitches in to Dietrich. Well, after seeing it for a while, 3 2 pitch, tried to bury it in again. He was very quick to that baseball. Got to it quickly. Got a good enough part of the bat on it to send it out of here. Still have the lead, though, 2 to 1. Real Muto has twice hit the ball on the ground to Solarte, once for a double play. And once for a more routine put out as Stanton and Fernandez having some fun on the Miami bench. Fastball down the middle called strike to Real Muto. One and one. Miguel Rojas poking in front of Stanton. That one's hit well. Out to left. Justin Upton with a long way to run, and he can't get there. And it falls down on the warning track. Real Muto is around second. He's going to make it to third easily. Well, he hit that one in the exact right place. Neither Venable nor Upton could get there. And a homer and a triple for the Marlins to start it off here in the seventh. I thought that ball was hung up there a long time, enabling somebody to get to it. It looked like Upton, when we take a look at the flight of this ball, we see the flight of the ball, and then how about the route or the first jump from Justin Upton in left field? Kind of held his ground a little bit, and then going out towards the angling out, and then coming in. So that kind of little bit of a roundabout route, enabling him not to get that straight line 
for a better chance to catch that ball. Ian Kennedy threw six shutout innings, but the Marlins get him with a couple of extra base hits to start the seventh pitching change at Petco. It shut out Miami in the first six innings. Brandon Maurer comes on. Pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Ford. It's been a few days back on the 22nd. That was on Wednesday for Brandon Maurer against the San Francisco Giants. Two thirds, three hits, three runs. So a chance to leave that runner stranded as Pat Murphy will bring the infield in. As you take a look at 97 pitches, six plus innings. Hey, Andrew Castro did it yesterday. Left a runner stranded. At third base. In his final inning of work, Gillespie yes. led off the inning with a triple. You got Mathis, Echevarria, he then hit a batter before getting out of things and a ground ball to third. That's perfect. So Larte checks back on the runner, and that's the first out. One third of the way there, Brandon Maurer. Last night, Kashner. Got the visit from Pat Murphy after the triple. Got the pop up. The ground ball. And eventually the line out. That was fun to watch. Yes, it was. Pat Murphy gave him the opportunity to stay in, took advantage of it as Casey McGee steps in to pinch hit for Phelps. And Mauer just misses with the 95 mile per hour fastball. So both teams will be into the bullpen here in the seventh. And McGee hits that one on the line to center. Venable coming in. He makes the catch. Runner tagging. And he'll have to go back. Nice job by Will Venable out in center. Perfect throw as he caught the sinking line drive in center field. And Real Muto would have been out by a lot. First of all, a few things here. Coming in, eyeing it perfectly on the run. One hop to the catcher. Played perfectly. That's two. And, you know, another good read off the bat. You know, that, that was a big swing. It sounded like he broke his bat. Or got in on him big time. Some outfielders are fooled by that swing. The ball falls in front of them. Lead off man Gillespie 0 for 3 tonight. First pitch swinging popped up right side. In foul territory, Norris and Alonzo giving it a look, but it's going to get back behind the dugout. Couple of rows. Strike one. Well, they wanted that one. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon Mauer trying to strand the tying run on third base. Got Edge of Aria, got McGee. Now ahead of Gillespie. Ooh. 
That's an RSBC. One saved by catcher. Chalk one up for Derek Norris. The old Rizbik. Great key ball. This ball's going to check up the other way. Watch when he hits. It goes back the other way because of the rotation on the slider. And Norris smothering it. He got squeezed on that last pitch. Yeah, they've been getting that outside corner pretty much all night. Norris punched out on it. So he knows what that's all about. And now three and one. It's got to be particularly frustrating for the catchers when sure they get is. rung up and then they go back down there and they don't get that pitch for their guy. Try again and a grounder to third. Solarte's got it. And Brandon Mauer comes on and strands the runner at third. He picks up Ian Kennedy. He gets Echeverria, McGee, and Gillespie. And the Padres still have a 2-1 lead as we stretch at Petco. Bullpen picked him up. by National University. Log on to nu.edu and learn how to launch your career today. And by Mercury Insurance. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com and see how much you could save. Ian Kennedy got it done on the mound and at the plate tonight. Doubled and scored back in the second inning and that run the difference in the game as the sun sets over downtown San Diego. Padres leading the Marlins 2 to 1 as Miami gets into the bullpen. Sam Dyson on for the 43rd time this year. Well, we got a close one going on here. Battle of the bullpens. And for Dyson, the three pitch pitcher, fastball slider changeup. Good arm. Mid 90s, upper 90s, 98. A sinker and a four seamer as well. Ichiro has come into the game to play right field. Gillespie was there. He moves to center. Yelich goes to left as Barma swings and misses. One and one. And Michael Morse out of this game for the Marlins. So Dan Jennings going with some defensive help here as we're into the later innings in a close game. Job foul, one and two. First time the Padres are seeing Dyson in this series. And 
Barmas lines that one up the middle for a base hit. Lead off single for Clint Barmas. He's aboard for the first time tonight. As the Padres try and get that run back and maybe some more here in the seventh. Yeah, do it as quickly as possible. Well, Clint Barmas, one who has good at back control. Knob. Barrel the bat to follow boy. Look at how look at how the hand comes. Loses the grip off the handle on the bat. And that bat wiggling going way out in front. Catching that ball out in front for the base hit. Barmas aboard. And Abraham Almonte will be the pinch hitter for Mauer, who certainly did his job tonight. Coming on to get the three outs after Kennedy left with a man on third. And Almonte pulls back, ball gets to the backstop, and that'll move Barmas into scoring position. Boy, a lot going on there. Looked like maybe Real Muto was expecting something else. He had the bat. Screened him a little. Yeah, he did. I mean, whether he's anticipating maybe a foul tip or something, but you're right. He, it's almost like Almonte had that barrel of the bat and, and trailing that baseball or in front of that baseball, as you mentioned, screening the catcher. So a wild pitch, and we'll see if he tries to bunt him to third now. Squares, puts it down, and perfectly right to Dietrich. Third baseman over to first, and a successful sacrifice for Almonte. Barmas over to third base with one out. Baseball, baseball. Perfectly executed. You know, the, the level bat, concentrate on bunting the top half of that baseball. Then you see the trajectory of that ball going down. And as soon as that ball is down, got to go. Infielders crashing. Clint Barmas 90 feet away. 5-4 sacrifice from Abraham Almonte. Did his job. And Dan Jennings going to come out. What the left-handed hitting Will Venable do to retrieve a southpaw from his bullpen. The chess match well underway here at Petco Park. 2-1 Padres in the bottom of the seventh. Man on third and one out with Will Venable scheduled to hit. Clint Barmas at third base and Mike Dunn out of the pen for the second time this series for the fish. And you see the 43rd game. What a chance for the Padres to get some insurance. A strikeout pitcher, 36 strikeouts in the 31 and the third. Pretty much a two pitch, two pitch pitcher, Mike Dunn. Fastball slider. And from the left side, yeah, mid 90s. Our game is presented in HD by Sony 4K. Dunn was brought on with Will Venable, the scheduled hitter, but as we said, chess match, and Melvin Upton Jr. will come off the bench to pinch hit for Venable. Matt Murphy going with the right-handed batter against the left-handed pitcher. And the Marlins uh, going to bring the infield in here with that insurance run 90 feet away.
I'm guessing first pitch, hard breaking ball down and in. Heads up left side of the infield. Armas getting the legs ready over at third. Ooh, Peter. Upton last night was one for three against Dan Heron. And the pitchers he's had the most success against in his career. Swings through that one, maybe tips it into the middle of the catch of Real Muto. One and one. Arm is singled, went to second on a wild pitch, sacrificed to third by Almonte. That was against Sam Dyson. Mike Dunn in. And Upton Jr. in. Done ahead of him, one and two. Try to go back to that same pitch. A little bit further inside. Two balls and two strikes. Slider. In the air, shallow right. Is he going to get over his head? It does. Prado can't get there. Farmis comes in to score. And Melvin Upton Jr. comes off the bench. And it's 3-1 Padres. The infield was in. Prado had a long way to go. And he just couldn't quite get there. That's the chance you take. Lefty on righty. Righty on lefty. You throw a breaky ball in with the infield in. You get jammed. And it's a little flare shot. Take that ball. No chance for Prado as he reaches and the Padres add on. Let's watch the bat of Upton on contact. <laughs> My goodness. Solarte with a runner on first and one out. Upton goes. They got him picked off. Throw down to second. Nobody's there. Stolen base for Melvin Upton Jr. and he's in scoring position. A first move from the lefty. Gotta go as soon as that foot is up off the ground. You take that chance. There's the jump. First move. Wonder what Echeverria was thinking. He just kind of held his ground a little bit as Prado then went over there, but by that time it was too late. Well, that changes everything. Takes out the possibility of a ground ball double play. And Dunn steps off as Prado had come in behind Melvin Upton Jr. Marlins got one in the top of this inning. Padres got it back. Now looking for more. They set up in on Solarte, but another check. Melvin obviously hasn't played a ton for the Padres, but six out of eight stealing bases at this point. Solarte from the right side for the first time tonight. And that one didn't miss, but they don't get the call as Carter Caps is getting going for Miami out of the bullpen. That's one of those where the catcher's set up inside. And he has to reach back for it, and you don't get the call. I, yeah. I, I don't see. I don't see how. I mean, you, you watch the the path of the ball, right? Foul back out of play. And it's clearly in the strike zone, but yeah. Looks out for the Padres.
in the order. All with hits tonight. Venable had an RBI single out of the leadoff spot. And Melvin Upton with an RBI single out of the leadoff spot. Pinch hitting here in the seventh. Long pause from Dunn and the one two to Solarte. Back our way. Let's uh, take a look back at our keys to the game. They're brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. And before this one started, Mark, that's what you wanted to see. I had a little formula. Two runs plus homers equals a win. Padres lead three to one. No home runs. And consistency with the K. See where I went there, Kennedy? K, consistency. Uh oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Seven strikeouts, which is a K in your scorebook if you're scoring at home. Another one, two to Solarte. Lays off. Slider down. Two and two. Camp on deck. Nice night for him. Good layoff. Good layoff. A lot of hitters will get froggy that pitch. Out of the hand, looks like it's good, but look where it ended up. Behind Melvin Upton, and the long pauses from Dunn while he's standing there. You got Prado, the second baseman, coming towards the bag, backing off. Echeverria moving around a little bit at shortstop, trying to keep him as close to that second base as they can. Three, two, and Salarte fouls another one back. AB so far. Spoiling some good pitches, laying off some tough ones. Got it. 94 up and in. The second out here in the seventh, and Matt Kemp. He has been very good as of late. That's the home run last night against Dan Heron, and since the seventh of this month, hitting 386, the second most home runs in baseball, and the highest slugging percentage in all of the major leagues. See a trend here in the second half? And yeah, what kind of a second half did he have last year? Monster. Just saying. You could see it coming with him on that last trip before the All-Star break. And he has been red hot for a good chunk of this month. And it has continued tonight. Single walk single. Thrown out in the fifth, trying to stretch it into a double. Now 97 hits on the season. Leads the Padres. Two and zero. Dunn coming on with an inherited man on base. He came in to score. Upton at second base belongs to him. 2 0 to Kemp. Took something off and gets the call. 2 and 1.
Kemp hit his 11th homer of the season last night. Last year, his fifth career 20 homer season. And a lot of it coming after the All Star break. Three and one. A couple of Kemp fans, and of course, always home road. We always see a Tony Gwynn fan. Hoping for a Matt Kemp big time knock here with two outs. Hitters count, and he takes the 3 1 outside, ball four. So Dan Jennings sticking with his lefty reliever, Mike Dunn, against Kemp. He walks him. And with Justin Upton coming up, they're back on the phone. I was kind of surprised Caps was not there against Kemp. Might not have been ready? I thought he'd been up for a while. Yeah, it's it interesting, like it. huh? Looks like Jennings is going to go to Caps now. So we'll get our first look at the guy that's probably got the most unorthodox delivery of anybody in baseball. If you haven't seen Carter Capps pitch, you're not going to want to miss this. Plus, Padres in a big spot, two on for Justin Upton. Call a friend. Out of the park to the park as we take a look at our fan Diego fans of the game. Little dudes checking out big league baseball on a Saturday night. Oh, yeah. There you go. Break it down. Oh, have a time. He's got some moves. Mm -hmm. Carter Capps has some interesting moves as well. The Marlin reliever on the pitch, and he throws hard, and he's funky. Yeah, uh, funky is uh, the right word, Jesse. 27th time. Nice ERA. Can we talk about deception in deliveries of some pitchers? I mean, this is big time deception, big time unorthodox. And what you're about to see is it's unreal. I, I tried doing that, and like I pulled two hamstrings. Start here. He's going to come at you about 98 miles per hour with the fastball. But that's just the beginning of the story. Just watch this. Hops forward. And he starts Upton off off speed, 1 0. And people have complained about it. Chip Hale was muttering under his breath the other night in Arizona, but Major League Baseball said, hey, this is okay. It's legal. They've cleared it. We're moving on. Because there's an issue that people will raise regarding it being an illegal pitch. You know, when a pitcher throws a baseball, you get some force off that rubber. You push off the rubber, right? Then you throw the baseball. Well, According to some people, they're saying, hey, he's doing a double push. He's pushing off the rubber. His back foot is coming off the ground, and then it's hitting the ground again for another push. 
which some people have said that's illegal. And the line that MLB has drawn is that he has to drag that back foot so that he can't really push off it again. And they've cleared the whole thing as you take a look. Okay, here's the first push. Watch his back foot. He is dragging that foot. And now watch. Does that constitute as another push? That's the issue. And the look, other thing is, sorry, you look, you look at how forward he is on the mound when the ball is released. So he's not throwing it from 60 feet, 6 inches. He's throwing it from 57 feet, 56 feet, whatever that is. And so the 98, everybody says, looks like it's 100, 200, 3 miles per hour. <laughs> right. Because when that ball leaves his hand, you're right, Jesse. If you drew a line from that grass mark where it meets the dirt on the pitcher's circle, that's where the ball's coming out. He's that much closer to home plate. Taking the long strider thing to a whole nother level. 99. And from up close. Okay, watch the, the push off foot. Does he come off the ground? Well, he drags it and then touches the ground again. Very weird. I don't even know how you do it. Like if you went out to the backyard after this game tonight yeah. and you tried that, you definitely pull something. Like how, said, does I mean, the, how does the guy throw 98? It's incredible. Last year when he struggled, nobody was complaining. This year he's almost unhittable, and you're hearing all about it. And that's strike three to up. Took something off and just forget about it. Carter Caps comes on, does his job, and he gets the Marlins out of the inning. The Padres, though, add one back. A 3-1 victory. Hopefully coming for the Padres. They lead by two after seven. Inning play Hensley and I are working on Padres Live, the post game show, which will be brought to you by Cox Communications. In the meantime, though, our Bill Howe plays of the game, seventh inning. Ian Kennedy had given up the home run, then a triple, nobody out, and Pat Murphy would go to Brandon Mauer. And look at this, does a great job. Gets the first pitch ground ball, gets it out, comes back again, hard life drive to center. Venable does a great job right there by stranding him at third as well. And look, this is big right here. Runner on third, two outs, strands him at third base with another ground ball to third base to get out of it. So the home run only damage that the Marlins could do in the seventh. And as I mentioned, it is a three to one ball game right now. With Clay and I see on Padres Live, the post game show after the final out, we'll tell you everything that happened here. We'll tell you about Cole Hamill's big day. Boy, you talk about a guy getting it done under pressure. The trade deadline looming. Everybody wants him, and he delivers a gem. We'll have that, and we're going to take you to Cooperstown. The players' inductions tomorrow, and Dick Enberg enshrined today. Jesse, you Mark? All right, Mike. Clay, thanks a lot. Plenty to look forward to on Padres Live the post-game show. Joaquin Benoit out for his eighth inning, and he delivers strike one to Martin Prado. And that first pitch strike is a breaking ball. 44th game for Joaquin. He's your eighth inning guy. One inning last night. He issued one walk. In the three to one victory against these same fish. Padres and Pat Murphy trying to follow the formula tonight. Mauer worked the seventh. As you see, Melvin Upton Jr. staying in. 
after pinch hitting for Will Venable and delivering an RBI single. Benoit eight, and if it'll still be a safe situation in the ninth, you can expect Craig Kimbrell. Since that double, a line out to right and a grounder to second. Two and two. I mean, every pitcher has his own routine and his own look on the mound, but what we just saw from Carter Caps, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Just physically. It's hard to put my. It's hard for me to look at that and see him have the success and throw the ball as hard as he does. Right. If he was throwing an 88 mile per hour fastball, you kind of, I guess, shrug your shoulders and say, all right, that's interesting. But he's throwing 98. Two and two to Prado. Fouls it off. Because when you look at his motion, and I'm not a kinesiologist and I'm not a physicist, I know a lot of people confuse me with one. Mm -hmm. But when he pushes, you would think a guy through 98, everything would have to be in unison to where you're pushing off your arms in motion. But when you take a look at his, his hand with the ball, it's behind his body, and he's still going forward. So then when his foot, front foot stops, then he brings it. It's, my point is it's all arm and upper body to throw 98. Usually a pitcher gets all his power from that back foot. Okay, now, okay, he pushes off. Now he comes to a stop. Now everything's upper body. It's just amazing. Went 24 and 1 in college in two years at Mount Olive College in North Carolina. What do you think the kids he was thrown against thought about that? Prado battling here, gets a piece of that 94 mile per hour heater from Benoit. There's another pitcher who pitched similar. Jordan Walden, was that who the guy was? Yeah, for the Angels. Angels. Some time with Atlanta, too. Right. Guy on Twitter brought that up, Brian. Three-two to Prado. And another foul ball. He's averaging like 17 strikeouts per nine inning this year. Party at the park at the park tonight. Nelly concert. It's going to be fun. Oh, I can't wait. You got the golf cart coming to take you out there as soon as the game <laughs> yeah. ends. Yeah. VIP area off to the Backstage side. Backstage pass. Sweet. Yo. Ninth pitch coming from Benoit to Prado. Little grounder to the left side. Long way to go for Barmas, and they're not going to get him. Good effort by the Padres shortstop, but where that ball was placed, no chance. And an infield single for Prado to lead off the eighth against Benoit. Lots going on around baseball. Madison Bumgarner, big day today. Hit his third home run of the season and allowed just one run in seven innings. As the Giants beat the A's. Huge night for Kirk Neuenheis, recently back to the Mets as they beat up on the Dodgers and scored a season high 15. And another guy whose name is being kicked around a lot in trade talks, Johnny Cueto, eight shutout innings. Look at the ERA in his last six starts. You look at it. Let's look at it together and admire it. Yeah, he'll be in a different costume come July 31st. Big name pitchers expected to be on the move in the next six days. Benoit trying to protect a two run lead, and Yelich hits that one to second. Could be two. Jerko steps on the back for one, and they cannot turn the double play. I don't know if Jed maybe had some trouble getting it out of his glove and just wanted to play it safe, take it himself, as opposed to flipping to Barmas. But a little bit of a miscommunication there at second. Okay, my initial thought is that Jed's got to give up this ball because, oh, it was the, okay. I did not see that funny hop. Did not see that funny hop, so I stand corrected. I did not see that there. 
because logically you would think his momentum is going to the bag. Barmas is going towards the bag. It would be an easier throw for Clint. It wasn't the case. <laughs> He's expressive. <laughs> He'll try again for the ground ball double play. Bohr is a good candidate for one of those, and he takes outside. That was pretty funny. What's that, the Pachango? <laughs> and all, all jokes aside, you know, Jerko with the bobble there? Yeah. It's a good job getting the one out. Yes. Because that thing could have really come yeah, off the rails. Exactly. Yelich at first, one away, and ball two to Justin Bohr. One for three with a single in his first at bat. Struck out in the fourth, line to right in the sixth. There's a strike from Benoit. Hey, 95, good sign. Benoit pitched an inning last night. So back to back nights, still got the good heater. Little look over at. Yelich at first base. Nine steals this season for Yelich in 11 attempts. Straight back, two and two. Tip hang on by Norris. How many times you see that ball pop out of the glove of the catcher? Sure. That's, that's when you can't practice. And that is a huge out. Benoit reaching back, touching 95 tonight. And a nice job by Derek Norris to hang on. Four got a piece and thought he had gotten some new life as Ichiro steps in for the first time. Here tonight. Came on to play defense in the bottom of the seventh. Started the first two games of the series in right field. And he takes strike one from Benoit. Ichiro 0 for 4 last night, 0 for 5 on Thursday night. And that's on the ground. Yonder's got it at first, takes it himself. And Joaquin Benoit does his job again. We go to the bottom of the eighth. 3 1 Padres.
of every day. By Petco, what we feed them matters. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Melvin Upton Jr. with one of the big hits tonight. Brett Wallace with one of the big hits last night as the Padres take a 3-1 lead into the bottom of the eighth. And Josh Johnson saying, I love you. You see that in sign, <laughs> sign language? language? Yeah. yeah. Well, you've seen the guys do that all season I long after big hits. More Carter Caps And Alonzo able to check his swing. One ball and no strikes. Caps came on to face Justin Upton and struck him out to end the seventh inning. Now Alonzo Norris and Jerko do in the eighth. I want to have to, uh, have to ask some of the Padre hitters their reaction after hitting off Caps. The numbers are really off the charts. Mentioned the 98 mile per hour fastball on average. It looks like, you know, 102, 103 because of where he throws it from. Mm -hmm. Hey, prior to this game, this dude's only given up 14 hits at 27 to third in his pitch. He's only walked six. 52 strikeouts. He's got at least one strikeout in 25 of his 27 appearances. Some control issues here, though, maybe. And he falls behind Alonzo. That's got to be your best bet almost. Just hope he's off a little bit. Missing. Yonder lines that fastball down the left field line, but foul. Speed didn't bother him there. Three and two. to left and this time it is just foul. Ooh. Third base umpire Alfonso Marquez straddling that line and Alonzo with another nearly moment tonight. Yonder missed a grand slam by a couple of feet in the first. This is extra bases by maybe a couple of centimeters there. He's had some good swings off caps. Yes, he has. He's got to think left field. I mean, the way the position in the outfield. Yelich and left. Gillespie and center swung over way over big time. Let's see all those pitches. Took something off. Cam says face two and struck out two. One away. Yonder fooled by the breaking ball. The slider anticipating something else it looked like. Been kept off the bases tonight. And he takes a fastball at 99 miles per hour. Greg Kimball getting ready for the ninth. The other thing about Carter Caps that makes him so tough, aside from the fact that he's throwing 100 from like 57 feet away, that guy can throw pretty hard too is if you watch Caps, the way he kind of keeps the ball back yes. behind him as he's getting ready to deliver it. I've got blown out shoulder just waiting to happen. <laughs> I mean, uh, imagine the torque on that arm and shoulder, the way he does that. I mean, the ball's all the way behind until the last moment. Yes. Three straight strikeouts. So you got the hop, the velocity, and then sort of the hidden ball. Back at it tomorrow afternoon, final game of this series. Join us at 12.30 on Fox Sports San Diego.
former Padre Matt Latos on the hill against Odrisamer de Spagne. Last game of this homestand for the Padres before they go off on a long road trip. Jed Jerko takes 99 in the dirt. Day off on Monday for the Padres and then without another day off they play three in New York against the Mets, three in Miami against the Marlins, and four in Milwaukee against the Brewers before coming home again without a day off. Tough stretch coming as Jerko grounds that one to Dietrich and a 1-2-3 inning for Carter Caps. He has struck out three of the four men he's faced and Craig Kimbrell getting ready to come in for the Padres and close this thing out. San Diego a 3-1 lead as we go to the ninth. Day in Cooperstown for Dick Enberg receiving the Ford C. Frick Award and Craig Kimbrell trying to make it a good night in San Diego on to close out the fish here in the night. And nobody would appreciate a win more than the professor himself as Craig Kimbrell tries to lock it down and get saved number 28. And the number is creeping down, down, down. The strikeouts we talked about caps. How about our guy Kimbrell? 53 punches in the 37 and a third innings pitched. Another guy with an unconventional look to him who can throw very, very hard. Fastball, curveball from Kimbrell. And he's got Dietrich, Real Muto, and Echeverria due up in the top of the ninth inning. Two run lead for Kimbrell. Came in last night with the Padres up three to one. And he got the fish. Trying for a repeat performance here this evening and first pitch swinging. Dietrich fouls it back. Kimbrell hit a couple of bumps in the road earlier on, and calling them bumps is probably overstating it. But going back to mid-late May, he has been almost untouchable. He's ahead of Dietrich, nothing and two. Got him. Curveball in the dirt. Norris throws to first. One away.
tough to lay off. Catcher Real Muto to face Kimbrell. Did not see him last night. Real Muto pinch ran in the ninth inning after Morse walked with two outs against Kimbrell. His triple in the seventh inning chase Ian Kennedy from this game. Ian in line to be the winner. For the Padres looking for his sixth of the year. Nice job by Brandon Maurer coming on. In the seventh. Real Muto on third nobody out. Got out of it. Joaquin Benoit did his thing in the eighth and now Krimbrell trying to do his in the ninth. Strike two at the knees, uh, 97. You, you know what we used to call that back in the day? Peas at the knees. Ooh, aspirin tablets. Small ones. Gets there in a hurry. Yes, he did. Oh. Dan Bellino says no. Two and two. I thought he went. Oh, there's no doubt. You always say that, but this time I'm with you. Two outs. Threw the curveball for a strike. Struck him out twice. Got Dietrich to swing and miss at the curveball in the dirt, and then he froze Real Muto with a curveball at the knees to away. You know the old philosophy is uh, <laughs> look for the look for the fastball and then adjust, yeah, adjust to Just the breaking ball. Good luck on that one. Marlins down to their final out. I pulled my quad just looking at that. <laughs> and Danny Echevarria 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Strike one. Mike Pomerantz and Clay Hensley have plenty more. Padres live, the post game show coming up. Little low, one and one. Laughable how good Greg Kimball has been. Look, look at this pitch as he gets on top of the power curveball straight down. Kimball trying to finish off the Marlins for the second time in as many nights. Maria holds off at 98. Two and two. Out of 37,300 on their feet. Ground ball, Alonzo. Toss to Kimbrell, nicely done. For the second straight night, Greg Kimbrell closes out the Marlins with some help on the right side of the infield. 
last night. Jerko a great play. Alonzo this time. And the Padres beat the Marlins 3-1 for the second consecutive night. Save number 28 for Craig Kimbrough. Mike Pomerantz has got Padres Live, the postgame show. What have you got? We're going to see in a couple of moments. We're going to talk about Ian Kennedy's evening, how he was able to be so effective against the fish today. You're going to hear from Pat Murphy in a preview of Social Hour with the Boons, Dad and Son, Brett and Bob.